Are we going to show that later on uh, when we discuss about we World can. School Your Fund? Your audience can go look on the website uh -huh. and see that this is the absolute basic educational system. Uh -huh. And soon we're going to have a free education system where any student can go to any high school or college in the world for free. We're going to convert all the private schools to be public, free tuition, room and board, travel expenses, so our young people can now become the new world leaders. All right. Thank you very much. All right, so right now uh, we're going to continue with our interview with uh, Alvin and uh, Mary Queen. Ang hirap banggitin, ano? Mary Queen. Uh, so, ching na lang, for short. All right, so is there any message that ibibigay kayo for our valued Skeptrons at saka yung mga ibang mga tao dyan sa somewhere sa area nyo in Caloocan? Meron kayong, may mga message kayo may advice sa kayo. Open for, ano ba to? Open pa rin to sa pag-invite ng mga other youth? Uh, opo, opo. So, paki-ano na lang kung gusto nyo invite sila. Oh. Um. Um. Hello po. Bali po to sa lahat po ng ibang kapatid natin dyan, I gusto niyo pong bumisita sa aming chapter. We Ano mga contact numbers no? At saka website, meron ba kayong website Opo, meron or po. Okay. Meron po kaming face, Facebook page po na Acro Victory Monumento po. So, And, okay, watch out sa Acro Victory Monumento website. Okay? Ah, uh, any numbers at you um, 09566345607. Yan po yung contact number ng aming chapter. Ulitin mo. 09 09 5 5 5 Okay. So, ito yung uh, telephone na binibigay mo is uh, galing sa inyong mismong uh, office, no? Oo. Okay. So, nag kayo ng mga new members. Yes. Or kung sino yung gusto pang maging part ng inyong grupo. Opo. Okay, from anywhere ba to or strictly doon lang sa... Anywhere po. Ah, okay. Kahit saan, basta magkaroon, may interest, may puso to really help, no, the kids and the, the youth. Okay, si Melvin. Dennis. Dennis, yan. Yeah. May tanong si Dennis. Alam mo na... Ano, uh, meron, ano pa bang mga in-expect namin na project para sa mga gagawin nyo? Tsaka yung talaga nga mga iba pang objectives niyan. Ah, uh, bali may uh, binabalak pa po kaming mga mga projects sa uh, sig siguro this uh, December. Uh, magkakaroon kami ng uh, mamimigay po kami ng uh, regalo sa mga bata. Bali sa December po siya. May mga I think may may concern din kayo sa mga PWD at saka senior. Ah, uh, Yes po, pero uh, titingnan po, po natin kung uh, um, siguro next year ah, okay. magkakaroon po tayo uh, ng uh, program para sa mga PWDs and then para sa uh, mga mga senior din. So, ano ang inyong uh, more or less final message sa mga kapadid natin sa ACMO? Ayun uh, po. Uh, Burning fire, man. Burning fire. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. Uh, Bali, yeah. Uh, keep the burning keep fire. Keep the burning fire uh, of uh, Alpaca Paro. Long live. Long live. Long live, yeah. Uh, yeah thank you. So, uh, we'd invite you, I'd like to invite you on our next topic, you know, with uh, Kit Dan Candice regarding uh, World School Fund and Education. Okay? So, please join us dito sa atin. Uh, while we uh, proceed to our next topic. But for a while, uh, we'd like to expect uh, Tos Lansang to uh, come up with an inspirational song. Yeah, song meron ka bang pang bata dyan? Oh, pang pabata? Eh, uh, I, 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 know, I was thinking of so many songs, but one song I'd like to share to you. For everybody, it's universal. Eh? For people who want to do good, to help the country you know, improve lives of people, especially those who are in the, in the ministry, Just like these kids, you know, they want to, you know, feed and uh, educate. Anyone who has a good project in mind or, a, you know, a, 
a plan in life that could help others, you know, not only for themselves. This is for you, so you can sing with me. Na, it's inspiration not only for them but for everybody. Please sing with me. If you know the words, please sing with me. When you walk through a storm, hold your It's a nice song. Thank you, Tos. Continue with your good works. Talaga. Kasi yeah. kasi may mga when you want to do something good, may mga trials, may mga babangga, may mga kadlang. Pero you have to keep on going. Uh, ganun talaga. Especially when you're starting. Uh, actually, that's a very inspiring song. And uh, naalala ko tuloy yung aming kapatiran, uh, Alpa Caparo, dito, ating dalawang guest. Uh, we're calling for holding on towards unity. Di ba? Global unity, in fact, kung tutusin. Yan ang mga panawagan nila. Eh. So, meron kayong panawagan ba dyan? For, uh, for unity ng uh, samahan so that uh, will strengthen yung inyong uh, grupo. Uh, ang panawagan ko lang po, uh, bali, uh, sana magkaisa na po lahat na uh, tigilan na po natin yung uh, pagkakawatak-watak, pagkakaparte-parte, uh, eh, magkaroon po tayo ng uh, pagkakaisa, unity. Yun. Yun ang maganda. No? Sabi nga, eh, itaas daw sa Panginoong Diyos lahat, yung hindi makakaya na ika nga ay pag-uugali ng tao, ay hindi natin kayong panghawakan, subalit kapag itinaas natin sa Panginoong Diyos, nothing is impossible. Ayan, di ba? Tsaka kailangan talaga bukas ang puso natin at mahaba or malawak ang pangunawa. Okay? Kasi yung unity, mahirap talagang big word yan eh. Big word yan, parang <laughs> love eh. No? Oh, parang big pag word yan. So, marami kang dapat uh, ipagsangalang-alang. Di ba? No? Para uh -oh. magkaroon ng unity. Kung meron kang mga, mga priorities na nandyan sa part ng buhay mo, kailangan mo rin yan i-let go eh, para mas mabuksan mo yung ibang e area ng buhay mo para makahalubilo mo yung ibang tao. Meron pa ang vision, Mel, kasi of course, we, ano, no, within ourselves, but we need God's grace eh, to really, ano, touch Ay, our hearts. Kasi, hello, Tita Mel. Tita Mel Mira, kamusta hello, ko? Hello, hello. Oh, we, I, I, I was just one, ano, saying na, ma, 
kailangan din natin ng tulong ni Lord eh, to yeah. keep this unity in our hearts. Mm-hmm. Love Tama. and grace. Ay, regarding unity, Melba, we're missing one partner dito sa ating... Oo oh, nga, nasa na kaya siya ngayon? Oh. Ah, <laughs> De, Henry, hi! Sa Manigo, kung nasa ka man oh, ngayon. Oh, Henry. Uh, ano bang report sa'yo, Denise? <laughs> May meeting daw siya sa Green Hills. Well, yeah. we miss you, but uh, hope uh, we hope to have you later on because we're going to have an event, no? At the what? Coconut Coconut House. Coconut House. Yeah, so we will be there in a short while. But uh, I would like to say hi to Tito Nell at saka si Miss Fe, no? Nag, uh, nag-like sila sa ating, uh, ating program. Hi, hi to all. Okay, so uh, this time, uh, ano bang magandang uh, isi-share ni Sir? Yeah, eh, Gina Salazar. Linda. Si Linda and... Phil Pla- oh, yeah, si May. Hi, May. Hi, Tita See May. you later. And si Susan de la Cruz. Hello, hello sa inyong lahat. And if you want to have a message, kung mag- gusto nyo magpadala ng message, just call us or text us here sa ating programang Bino- Pinoy Buhay Kooperatiba. So right now, uh, you can actually uh, join in and uh, you can call us or text us uh, or give messages. But of course, with our cell phone numbers, We, uh, you can reach us at uh, my cell number, 0919-211-1954. And of course, Melba. Yes, uh, it's here on the screen right now. It's 0917-872-0172. At ang akin pong uh, cell phone, saan, no? It's 0925-872-2017. 0925-872-2017. Ayan. Si Denise, 0-9-6-5-2-3-7-2-6-3-3. Okay. Oh, by the way, pwede ko bang i-inject lang ng konti about Pro-Life UK? Okay, kasi uh, right now, we are uh, really inviting mga new uh, financial consultants. So, yeah, um, uh, Well, we have that also, yung mga projects natin sa, sa Pro-Life, no? Like, uh, nagtuturo kami ng mga kabataan din. May isang project sa amin na, yan ang uh, isang uh, binibigyan namin ng panahon. Yung pumupunta sa schools, nagbibigay ng, uh, ano to, nag, uh, nagiging part sila ng mga pagtuturo, like English, yung mga ganyan. But, uh, of course, right now, uh, bukod doon kasi, we are looking for, Uh, kasi nag-expand yung yung aming uh, branch no aming team so kung sino po yung mga interesado to really go um, sa May 1 uh, doon po sa Ayala North Exchange Tower uh, sana po maging uh, uh, maging opportunity to sa inyo baka ito na po yung hinahanap ninyong career and uh, kasi yung gusto namin makatulong din eh sa mga tao okay kabataan ang hinahanap namin dito mga millennials <laughs> May 1 at 8.30. 8.30 sa Ayala yan. Katabi ng Makati Medical Center. At uh, talagang tinatap namin right now po mga young professionals, mga youth. Okay? So, kasi alam namin ito yung may sigla. no? Kaya Mary Queen and Alvin, I'm inviting you. Sana you can be uh, available sa May 1. Okay? It is gonna be a big, big day and it's gonna be a fruitful day para sa inyo. Thank you. Ayan, yan po ang portion natin brought to you by ProLife Life UK. UK. Alright. <laughs> ah, wala ba kayo mga kamay? ProLife UK. Yes. Uh, Thank you, ProLife. Of course, uh, itong ano, um, we'll be uh, coming up in our second half of our program. Actually, it's been already an hour, almost an hour. So, we'll be ready uh, for our next uh, topic about World School Fund education oh, okay. okay thank you we'll have a break for me so ready for the video and changes like a thing inside i'm walking by a lot of open doors but i never let it down
Bahas ang ginagahasa Ang ating kabundukan Malungkot na katotohanan Ay pili natin bantayan Gumuguhong kabundukan Maraming namamatay Silang nakikinamang Na atin namang Kapahamakan Pagkakahoy, matroso at mina Bundok dati lunti ay ngayon hinapanod na Nga ibong walang tahanan, maawa naman kayo Huwag sa walang bahala, isigaw na, tigilan na Sobra-sobrang pagmimina, ilog nila sa inyo Da sa ating dagat, unti-unting nawawala. Samar, Sibuyan, Cagayan, Agusan, marami pang lugar, ginagahasan nyo. Inang kalikasan, ating bantayan, tulungan nyo kung buksain silang lahat. Kami mga biktima na mga gawain nyo. Palitan kayo mga busado, masasamang gawain nyo. Yung totoong sarin kalyado pa ninyo Itingin na lang ba tayo, tayo'y kumilos na Huwag nating hayaan silang mapagsamantala Kamu'y nakikiusap sa inyo Pagkilan na Okay. Nagbabalik tayo sa ating programang Pinoy Buhay Kooperatiba tuwing araw ng biyernes. Alas 11 na umaga hanggang alauna ng hapon. Iyan. Ayan, Tita Ludz. So, naging masyadong malamang-malaman <laughs> itong ating pinag-uusapan, no, uh, Bob? Oo. Oo, kasi tungkol sa mga kabataan and uh, yung kanilang uh, masigasig na mga proyekto no para uh-huh. sa mga kabataan din. Oo nga. Ayun, you to you. Naniniwala ka ba yung tao uh, kasi itong background yung tao kailang ma-mold mo siya accordingly sa kanyang kakayanan. Yes. Para ma-develop mo siya Oo. rather than pilitin mo siya na porke uh, alam mo, it's already a tradition in the Philippines that if your father is a lawyer or if your father is an engineer, the son yes. or the children follows that they it follows. And basically, that's actually uh, a matter of issues of uh, having misfits. So, some people really say, I didn't really, really want to take up law. I didn't really want to take up engineering or, or nursing, mm-hmm. for that matter. But uh, they have their own personalities and uh, skills that they believe in themselves, where they can excel. Yeah. So, this is a matter of really uh, uh, type, uh, planning well the future of a person w- in which he is best at. So kailangan natin supportahan yun. Oh, okay. Like like my share ko lang yung mm. sa aking uh, my son no. Cuz uh, the father wants him to take nursing, take up nursing. Mm. Okay? And uh, but he is from a technical school, from elementary to high school. And when he uh, went there to sa uh, isang school for nursing, uh, he failed no. Uh, the interview Because uh, na psycho, he was uh, a psych- psychologist asked him, why do you want nurse take up nursing? 
But uh, true enough that because he doesn't want that, it's only the father who want, wanted the course for him. And uh, he was uh, told by the, by the interviewer, I'm sorry, but I don't think you're fit to take up nursing because what he wants is, is from co uh, no, uh, computer uh, IT, uh, information technology. So he, he pursued, and I, I supported him to take up IT. Okay, mm -hmm. programming, and now he excelled. Oh, yes. Good, okay, so this ta <laughs> this is really a, 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 a I'm a witness of that. That yeah. you should really uh, start uh, giving the child the opportunity or the chance to choose which he wants. No, what he wants. I agree. I because agree. Because if not, then at the end of the day, it's uh, gonna be a failure, and it's gonna be a depressing uh, moment for them. No, so yon kailangan talaga supportahan. Uh, sila sa education na gusto nila yung course na gusto nila okay, okay. so yun kaya nga we, we are able to uh, make an introduction of this topic because uh, we're looking forward to the proper education yes. that uh, we're, um, that needs to be uh, set as a model para sa, for our uh, future right for our kids future and basically if we can if we'll be able to uh, design or come up with the right course for your stu for your children you'd be able to guarantee a, a bright and happy satisfied future for the humans you know yes. for everybody so we're uh, actually having this as part of our introduction for our topic for today and uh, we're gonna welcome here our speaker for the topic uh, education or worldschoolfund.com ladies and gentlemen mr keith duncan you have the mic Okay, yeah. yeah. The basis for the two main websites, the first one is called teenmm.com, which anyone can see, teaches our young people at age 14 to 15 how to start their own small business. And that's key. If they're earning money while they're in school, they're now identifying their best traits. Now the parent's role is to help guide the child, but not to force them into a particular curriculum or particular inherited family business and it happens all over the world so the real key is early testing for the young people to understand their best skill levels that's right and then worldschoolfund.com is a world famous website that's going to give us free internet around the world the government should have given that to us 20 years ago so that we can communicate freely mm -hmm. and our guests here today that work with the youth uh, we can talk, uh, have a little conversation here, but the key is I see so many children that, that graduate at age 22, they've never held a job, they've never had a business discussion, they've never seen reality of what does it take to produce a product or service or to sell a product. Is that me? Is that me back? There, okay. So the answer is early education. And as we stated earlier, my own two sons were earning 25,000 pesos a day developing, uh, doing a, a product or service in our own neighborhood. Uh, there we got the, the game down. So um, the, these, the, the young people that we work with today, these are leaders of, a, of our local youth. And the question that we have for them is where do they see the best use of education for our young people? Response? Yeah. Ah, uh, may katanungan lang po ako. Paano po natin may improve yung uh, education dito sa sa atin? Philippines. Sa yep. Pilipinas. The, the question is uh, Here's a question actually. This question is uh, how can how can we, we we improve the education in the Philippines? Correct. With the best professors, the best technology particularly for the young people to talk and interact with other students and other professors around the world. One of the key answers is for them to have free websites, excuse me, free internet and use their cell phone in the classroom so they can do video conference calls with other students and other professors around the world. Right now they don't allow cell phones in the classroom because the kids are texting and playing video games. But if they mount their cell phone over their desk with a small Bluetooth keyboard, mm -hmm. they can now actively search the internet mm -hmm. while they're in class. And instead of the teacher going blah, 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 mm -hmm. 
this will be on the test next week. Do you remember that? Mm. And those are, those are uh, every student cringes when they hear that mm. because it's all about blah, blah, blah. Mm. If the students are interacting in the classroom and actually running their own small business while they're in class <coughs> and communicating with their other friends mm. who have similar interests, that's called a partnership. That's called entrepreneurship, which is the number one education need for our entire world. Free education to any high school, any university in the world. And by default, the public schools will automatically become public schools. You'll never have to pay for any education at any level. So yeah. anyone can earn a master's, engineering, trade, PhD level. Let's talk about uh, the uh, basic you know, scenario in the Philippines. First, and uh, let's apply if this uh, idea or concept is workable right now, given, for instance, this youth that we have uh, right beside you, you know, Alvin and the Mary Queen. Well, yes, and one of the key what issues. What do they expect uh, from this uh, world? Uh, okay. And we've education. been to the Department of Education, yes. the top level commissioners, yeah. and we've spent time in your classrooms what for do you the last three them? years. And the number one problem we see. They don't have no technology. The teachers are only getting paid 20 or 25,000 pesos per month, and there's no technology. So unless you pay for private school, our young smartest children will never become world leaders. That's a very root issue. So that's what you're going to say about information age. It's about using the power of the internet to uh -huh. connect people and to use the education of the website mm -hmm. for people to identify their best skills and talents and have them develop businesses, small business entrepreneurship around mm -hmm. their best love, what they love to do. So and playing video games is not a future. Okay, so more or less it's something besides uh, you. Uh, having to learn uh, academics, you know, the, the ones that you read on, you know, the websites and uh, even on the text or even in textbooks we're now going to develop the person not based on what he reads but what he rather practically what experiences he uses. and exactly. what he uses exactly. you know actually that's a, an outlook right now that we believe that most people especially in this modern age uh, Melba is coming up with uh, uh, having 80% of their time using the cell phone or the mm -hmm. personal computer and that actually develops the youth of today inclined more into reading getting to uh, work on which they are interested in rather than to think about the work and where there uh, my question is that how do we more or less develop them uh, knowing that they are able to come up with the uh, with the right direction or right breathing based on the, uh, your program? Well, the basis is to identify their skill levels and talents early mm -hmm. when, they're in, when they're in high school. Sample. And so when they see that engineering can make them money mm -hmm. and that finance is important in, and yes. business contracts are mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. and products and services, mm -hmm. you have some of the absolute number one best inventors mm -hmm. and, and, and people that are smart mm -hmm. in the Philippines. The problem is there's no mindset mm -hmm. to start your own small business. Right, right. So our group is, is teaching the entire Philippine economy and other economies how to, for our young people to be independent. Bill Gates, Warren Buffetts, right. Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. That's the answer is to think rich uh -huh. and to practice your skills mm -hmm. making money while you're young. Don't wait till you're 22 expecting to get a job in a corporation where, in fact, you'll end up working probably at Jollibee's. Mm -hmm. Right. I could imagine uh, the, the, the multi-rich or rather wealthy people are actually the youth, young, young entrepreneurs right now, like uh, the one, the owner of Facebook and... Uh, Correct. They are yeah. usually uh, dynamic people who really break the tradition and they go beyond it and are able to change the world yes one of the basic teaching principles we teach is called the oreo cookie principle we okay can you tell us about oreo the cookie? oreo cookie principle the young people are the cream in the middle 
their number one goal <laughs> could is to it. find mentors that are above them, uh -huh. which are the smart business leaders and the successful people, and to learn from the mentors how to start and run their own small business. Mm -hmm. The bottom layer is for them to find people beneath them that they can mentor, the younger people that are, might be interested. So the Oreo cookie sticks together and rises in knowledge and wisdom as a group. So the young people become students mm -hmm. in the middle, but they also immediately become teachers of what they learn to people they mentor below them. Mm -hmm. So all three rise at the same time. So that's wonderful. I believe that uh, learning is not a matter of a standalone thing. <laughs> it actually needs regular mentoring and guidance until the particular protege, so to say, protege, will become rich and really Correct. ready for you know ready for 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 employment or for the career well, in which he is concentrating on. and the key is to learn to be successful the first time mm -hmm. don't go through a series of failures uh -huh. learn from the failures of other people mm -hmm. including studying the great billionaires that you have here in the philippines find out what they did right uh -huh. and repeat what they did so you're modeling after very successful people just a brief interjection hello, hello. on my on, on my in my opinion in my opinion maybe uh, because we're an agricultural country and you know you know but uh, to me first and foremost I guess I anyway, if only you know maybe this far-fetched but if only first and foremost we could teach the youth or the coming generation or the coming coming generations the word of God because uh, any technology, any high tech without the word of God, you know, you can su succeed to a certain extent. But the bottom of line is, if you have God's word, uh, everything will follow. Uh, that's uh, I don't know how to do it, but uh, you know, Israel started with the word of God. They were the the first country who, you know, they were chosen by God to have the Torah and uh, you know, the word of God. So they're quite successful now. As a matter of fact, they're exporting and they're quite okay. So I guess anyway, if we could only start w start them off with the word of God and follow the other things later, uh, to me that's anyway. Okay. Uh, thank you for your sharing. Corey, we'd like to welcome uh, our main host. <laughs> okay. Uh, Henry Samaniego is in already in the house. All right. Right. So let's continue on and uh, we'll... We'll uh, have a break for a meantime and then we'll, uh, we have a song for you.
Okay, we're back to regular programming dito sa ating Pinoy, Pinoy Buhay, Buhay Kooperatiba. Sumasapit sa inyo tuwing Biyernes. Tuwing alas 11 ng umaga hanggang alauna ng hapon. Uh, uy, alam mo, uh, marami tayong ginagawa itong Friday, ano? Uh, alam ko, medyo kanina, akala ko kasi... Uh, Makakahabol ako sa pupuntahan ko. Hindi ako nakahabol. <laughs> so sabi ko, diretsyo lang ako dito. Sayang lang. Oo, oh. nasayang yung oras ka. But anyway, oh. hindi, nakarating ako kaya lang. Uh, masyadong high, uh, uh, high tech yung kanila mga ano, uh, oras. So, uh, ganun talaga. So, uh, learn your lesson well. <laughs> Ayan ang message. <laughs> Minsan dapat napaga ako. Siguro dapat nine pa lang. Nakaalis ka na kasi matraffic kasi. Ayan. But anyway guys, uh, mamaya, uh, pakita natin yung poster ulit. Ay, marami tayong likes, ha? Huh? Okay. Uh, ang ating show, uh, Kit, would you be coming here tonight at uh, Coconut House, ha? Huh? You know the place? Yes, we're going to Coconut House tonight. We're going to Coconut House tonight at Quezon Circle. Quezon Circle. Yes, it's yes. located near the, the monument from Manuel Quezon. Mm -hmm. We did a video broadcast from there two years ago mm -hmm. talking about World War II and what Manuel Quezon did for your education. And yes. remember, the history of the Philippines has always been some of the absolute most brilliant geniuses that have worked on promoting education for the Philippine people to be a world-class power. So that's what we're helping do with your Department of Education, Duterte, and other groups. Yeah. Our 100% focus is entrepreneur, technical, mm -hmm. new businesses for the Philippines so that the Philippines will be independent mm -hmm. of the, uh, the different problems going on around the world. Yo, yeah, okay. Uh, Bob, uh, Melba, and uh, your guest. Uh, Kit here knows the history very well than me. <laughs> I, I, only, I only know Quezon City's memorial uh, part, uh, the, that circle only. But the history, I don't read. Oh, I haven't read that. But anyway, you know Manuel that, Quezon. That, that is really the history of the how how Manuel Quezon, the, the president, yeah. built that place. Uh. You know, he was sitting there and he said, in this circle, we'll build. Uh -huh. And exactly, act, actually, he died, you know? Right. He died That's of TB, Quezon tuberculosis. Memorial, so uh, his, his, uh, he was the mentor. I mean, the uh, other people would say, the we have to continue his dreams. Right. So that dream, that dreams, really a, uh, a uh, how do you say that? Uh, a reality now. Okay. That is why that is a Quezon City a Memorial Park. Yeah, in behalf of uh, Ke uh, I mean, um, Charito Planas, the, uh, yeah, uh, our former chairman of, uh, mm. of Quezon City Memorial, how would you quote her? She was really an, an advo advocate for that also, mm -hmm. that uh, Quezon City Circle. And we may, maybe next time, you know, we will have a show, a big uh, event on that circle. Uh, we, we'll have a very, very good meeting with uh, Mr. Jun Casillo next time. But anyway, performing on that tonight will be Edwin Negapatan, Noe Mahiwaga, okay, Melba Pagia, Robert Delara, or Bobby. We have Tos Lansang, yeah, yeah. Harry okay. Samaniego, and sing. me. Okay. Sing. Uh, Denise Laksamana will be doing the, some the uh, uh, photographs, maybe, huh? Actually, Kasi right. Masipag to si Denise, magana. Right now, I, I'm, I, I'm talking to Keith, and he told me he also sings. So he maybe sings, he could, yes. He oh, that in, right? Oh, he like, he's for 20 years. For 20 years. Look at his modulated voice, so he's ready oh. to sing anytime. It's not just for announcer voice, but modulated singer voice. See? So anyway, we'll watch out for Keith later on for, for the fans out there. It's not just brains, it's also uh, talent for, <laughs> for Keith. Yes. Okay, Melba, would you say something about this show tonight? Uh, yeah. Invite them. Okay, uh, again, again. No, invite namin ang lahat to really come and uh, join us sa Coconut House, yan. Sa May Quezon City. Yes, inside okay. the circle. Okay, uh, para, ano, uh, this is actually a restaurant, no? It's a uh, restaurant. It's a, a restaurant, uh, and uh, now, uh, we will be there to really uh, render songs for you. Kaya sana, uh, those who are especially yung nasa malapit, no? Mm -hmm. You could uh, join us later. Yan. So, uh, Henry will be there and the rest of the group. 
uh, will be uh, really uh, give you entertainment. Yes. Okay, yan. Oo. Okay. Uh, alam mo kasi bihira doon sa circle na meron ganong entertainment. Mm-hmm. It's only at the coconut house. But but the circle itself, the inside the uh, the circle, there's a lot of shows or events. But the house itself, they have some performers uh, who do now uh, their events like uh, the rappers, painters, you know. And uh, you can also invite your friends to do some events there, because uh, Mr. Jun Castillo is really inviting people who could really do some performance and have it have, let them. See you perform there at the Coconut House. Actually, mm-hmm. last year uh, pr- performing was it this year that uh, Mike Hano Paul? This year only. This, this year, year only. Yeah. Oh, and Resty uh, Pabunan as well as uh, last March. Oh, last think, March oh. performed at Coconut House. Yes. Right. Oh. So it's time. It's our turn now. Oh. <laughs> Good for one day. Good for <laughs> one night. And maybe <laughs> next month uh, we'll do it uh, once a month also. I'd like uh, TZ Mall. Uh, we'll have it by May. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. It's April. yeah, May twenty uh, one, maybe uh, again. Uh, we. Uh, it's my advocacy to have a performance with the others for jamming at the TCE Mall once a month. I promise that. So uh, it will be. It will be good. Also to see everybody who could uh, have a time. Meron po kayong time magpunta every Saturday. And Sunday with uh, that uh, Tito Nell. Huh? Tito Nell have this uh, advocacy for Showbiz Expo. They're training people or youngs, young people who, who would like to have uh, knowledge for editing, dancing, uh, voice and video editing, right? So a lot of them, a lot of it. You know? uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, they start from 1 or we start from 1 to 5. That will be a uh, very good chance for those people who really like, love to uh, have the uh, knowledge for editing or singing or right. uh, drama right. like that. Huh? Mm. Uh, Denise here we have uh, the, the chance to have a uh, to uh, uh, do some editing, right? Nakapag editing ka na karong ako ba ng pagkakataon na makapag ano sa ano ni Tito Nel? Ah, uh, wala siyang patayan. Uh, okay na? Ah, uh, wala. Okay. Oo, uh, kasali ko diyan last uh, nag-start kami noong April 14. 'Yon. Tsaka yun doon sa mga gusto naman sumali daw diyan. Uh, punta lang kayo sa TC Mall. 'Yan, kausap ni Tito Nel. Ano ba yung mga tinuturo sa iyo diyan? Sa video editing sa sa ngayon video editing siya. Ano nga yung ginagawa niyo? Ang um, pagbi-video ano yung edit ng movie. Saka mga mm-hmm. pictures. Pwede ba splice, splice? Uh, yeah. Meron yun. kayo doon? Tapos susunod dyan yung acting workshop daw, sabi ni Tito May. Acting? Yeah. Okay. Oh, hindi. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, well. Saka yung film showing sa May 18 and 19. Yeah. Alright. So, let's... Maybe, maybe, you know, we could invite Keith, ano, to have him as a... Uh, uh, to speak. have a chance to speak, speak. Uh, on that day. Would you like to have that? Chance, uh, Keith. Which day is this? That is Saturday and Sunday. You can have a uh, slot for them to, f- you to teach people there who would like to have a chance to, uh, to edit, or uh, uh, well, your uh, your advocacy for uh, IT also. That would be wonderful. Yeah, okay. This we'll, s- uh, we'll have that uh, maybe oh. this May, this May. this coming May. But uh, for the meantime, we'll have Tito Nell knows what time you'll be able, mm. or we'll what time you have, we'll you'll be available. For that. We'll make arrangements for Arrangement. that. Arrangement, we'll, we'll yeah. We'll publish it on World School Funds so right. people can center on that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Next event. All right. Yes. So that let's go good. back to the topic uh, okay. about wor- World School Fund, and we'll be uh, having Kit to uh, thoroughly present to us. More maybe a matter of... Uh, 10 minutes? 15 is good. So that there will be interaction as well? Okay. Okay, so please uh, carry on with your presentation okay. about World School Fund. Okay. Grab, grab the, mic, the microphone here. Uh, All good right. audio? Good audio? Okay, good. Well, the basis behind this is when I was growing up, I actually worked with youth groups it's teaching Sunday school, and I saw my own need of trying to be focused on what was important to me to make business. 
and the whole system is unless people are making a good income and that they're happy at work, they're not going to be successful. And working for large corporations might be good for the first one to five years, but the real answer has always been entrepreneurship. It's always been learning how to conduct business. And the thing is, most of the inventors and smart people, they do too much. They try to take on all aspects of the company. And the real advantage is to find friends who are good at accounting, legal work, customer service, product development, operations, so that each person focuses on what they do best. And that's called partnership. Mm -hmm. It's called not employees, it's called partners. And that's the best way to incorporate your own company so that you're, all, you're paying taxes and you're an integral part. But it's really about finding customers. The whole basis for sales training, which is what we're specialized in also, is until you have a customer who puts money in your bank account, you do not have a sale. You do not have a profitable business. And if you don't make profit, you're out of business. One of the basic root problems with America, as well as the Philippines, is if they tried to conduct a business, whatever that might be, a store, and they fail, they therefore think that they're not any good at business, and now they're taught by their relatives and their, their moms and dads, never start your own business. So there's a fear factor of the stories that have gone around about most businesses fail. Mm -hmm. About 90% of all small businesses fail because of proper planning, mm -hmm. and they're also trying to duplicate somebody else's business. Well, actually, I have a question here. Yes, sir. Um, about the, uh, you know, I've experienced with some Filipino Chinese friends, and I've noticed that, uh, you, know, you know, they were classmates of mine during college. And uh, one thing that I've noticed, actually, is the practice of the parents um, training their children after college to manage their construction yes. hardware business or yes. maybe uh, electronic business and mentor. Yes. Mentor. You know, you talked about the Oreo principle. So mentoring is really guiding the child to be developed into somebody else that he uh, practically wants to, of course. And uh, I do believe that uh, Chinese are, Filipino Chinese that I know are uh, really inclined to business. And uh, most of them, when we talk to, uh, you know, Melba, uh, you uh, have Chinese, Filipino Chinese friends who, who we always think to be business-minded people because they really excel and they do better. Do you think, what do you think of the Chinese principle in uh, education and training in terms of mentoring? Well, the mentoring is, is a key aspect, and we're going to continue to, to, to stress you do not want to work harder. That's a misconception. You want to work smarter. Two weeks ago, we were part of a keynote speaking group. We were supposed to have Cynthia Villar, which is uh, Manny Villar. Her, their daughter came, who is Camilla Villar. She actually is the president of All Home and a real estate company. So automatically, in, in America, we call it the golden spoon or the silver spoon, but they're learning at a step up level how to be successful by correct mentorship. And the internet, including over the cell phone, is one of the absolute best ways to learn how to conduct business. Now, the number one way to be profitable and to be a multimillionaire is to be first to market with new innovative products. And that has to do with a word called branding. You have branding. to brand yourself with an identification That's that right. you are unique. The next Coca-Cola, the right. next IBM, Take note the of next this. Microsoft. Right. In the Philippines, we have Mongol. And there's Mongol. A, there's I don't know if there's Mongol here, more Mongol lapis. Ah, okay. Henry, do we still have Mongol pen? It's pencil? Only the, yeah, it's only in the Philippines. <laughs> yes. Yes, we still have, I think. Right, even Colgate, you know. Mm. These are all the brandings that we had since we were young. Correct. We never thought there's, there are other toothpaste companies. We thought only of Colgate. Right. And, and then we thought of uh, some yeah, other, that's correct. you know, right? And yeah. Sony was the, t the only TV that we know really then. Right, and I have to, <laughs> I have to state that multi-level marketing is not the place to go. The only, the mo only real advantage of multi-level marketing is to teach people how to sell products and services. But because it's a pyramid scheme, very seldom is it successful. 
if you can learn proper sales techniques on how to close the sale, we're going to bring a group here that's world famous called CEOspace.net and you're going to find that. I'll say it again, CEOspace.net, which is the space for CEOs to run the world as small business entrepreneurs. The website that promotes that is called solutionmanifesto.com, which is another singular solution to teach the world to be all middle class small business owners. Do you have already that on the on screen? Yeah, and on the screen we'll bring up World School Fund, right. which is the main website. Now the key here, number one, is absolute publicity. Number two, we're showing the world how to get free high speed fiber optic internet for the entire world. Once that happens, it should have happened 20 years ago, once we have free internet, you will never pay for data or phone calls again. And you'll be connected across the internet through your cell phones and computers to know who is who. Number three is absolutely critical for the New World Society. Free education to any high school, any university in the world. That includes free travel expenses, tuition, room and board, books, food, and that way anyone can go to any of the highest level universities in the world for free. And by default, the private schools will now become public schools and the real advantage, the brightest, smartest people who are masters and PhD levels will now earn three times more money than they've ever earned before. So you're going to retain your smartest Philippine people are now going to be your new professors of a new education system. They're going to be paid more than they've ever been paid. And really, our educators need to be the highest paid people, not in government, but in the public school system. That's a real key. Okay, I think Melba has a question. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, well, I, I've been uh, telling Bob, it's very overwhelming, no? Uh, the one you're telling us right now. It's really good and uh, very interesting. But I have uh, this question in mind. Uh, how do you uh, uh, you come up with this and who are the people behind this who are the sponsors uh, regarding the funding and all that correct yeah. yes. okay. uh, perfect question the number one question people ask where does the money come from to pay for a new system and you'll find it on the internet it's actually a new direct democracy system where we're going to use our cell phones to vote after the election and tell each leader the next project. So instead of taxes, it's called direct funding. And that's revolutionary because there's no system in the current world that empowers the people to tell each leader, build schools, fix the roads, hospitals, all the basics infrastructure. So the funding is gonna eliminate the problem of, this, of the family dynasties, the stock market manipulations, the cyber criminals, the rebels, the terrorists, all the people who are making the real money. And it's all because they hold secrets. And people talk about public, uh, public versus privacy laws. There's a number one problem. You do not want a private society. You do not want privacy where the criminals can hide the cash flow. If everybody is on the open on the money they make, the contracts they make, and their business relationships, everyone is 100% integrity, ethics-based businesses. Mm -hmm. So the money will come from a website called evote.one, which is a 100% direct democracy. Mm -hmm. Also, anyone in the world can run for any office anywhere in the world. So if you're the best person to be governor of California, she wants to run a business in North Korea, someone wants to go be uh, run for a mayor in Russia, there'll be no restrictions on them because of the new database and the new voting system. So it'll effectively, we'll mix everyone up around the world uh, okay. so we won't have so many nation against nation. Okay. And the Philippine benefits okay. because they're one of the, they really are one of the smartest educated groups, yeah. but there's no cash flow in your economy right now. Mm. Of course, uh, let me interact on that also. Uh, we believe that actually the uh, e-vote system that you're thinking of may be as effective. In fact, we already introduced the uh, 
so many voting uh, machines introduced to have a really uh, sound result yes. output but basically uh, we seem to to have some human intervention somewhere along the way and this seems to be a little bit ideal actually to come up with uh, honest uh, incorruptible people Correct. in the system for us to truly achieve this and since you t you're telling us that this is the main, um, first step of the process to have uh, good legislators really yes. truly uh, validly elected uh, legislators or you know congressmen or you know elected officials we really need uh, um, them to sit and then come up with the educational system for a free education for the Philippines in for instance and that means to say uh, the other allotted taxes should be assigned or uh, assigned to education funds and right. that is how we work it out in the Philippines is that what you're trying to say that uh, once uh, the funds will be allotted for education everybody can have a free education correct now uh, what do we how do we do uh, resolve the issue about um, unemployment for the teachers or is there an issue about unemployment for the academe or the other teachers how, how do we resolve that? Well, the answer is the pay. You're not going to get the best, brightest teachers unless they're earning at least 50,000 pesos a month. They really need to earn 100,000 pesos. Mm -hmm. And your professors at the university level need to be earning four to 500,000 pesos per month. Mm -hmm. And the root problem is there's no new money coming into the Philippine economy. There's a super class at the very top, mm -hmm. no middle class, 85% mm -hmm. poverty. One of the answers is to invite millions of foreigners to come here as dual citizens, bring their families, bring their money, allow them to build new communities back in the provinces. And if you do the math, that's billions and billions of new dollars that get poured into the economy and stay in the economy. Now I'll go back very briefly to evote.1. The power behind that is we're going to use a cell phone or computer to vote with your picture your picture will now be tied to your vote so nobody can ever change your vote. Smartmatic and Comlec will no longer be needed. You do not need a monitored election system when you can go back on the internet and see every one of your votes with your picture. So that's the revolutionary part of evote.1. Well, Clean elections that the numbers cannot be changed. What, what do you think of uh, hackers? We, is that uh, workable here uh, with that system? We, we've already solved that problem 10 uh -huh. years ago. Mm -hmm. The problem is identity theft. In order for me mm -hmm. to hack you, I've got to assume your identity. I've got to get a back door into your database mm -hmm. and your system. Yes. And that's the problem with secret databases. Nobody knows they've been hacked mm -hmm. until after the, the, the damage has been done. And the banks right now are being hacked continuously because once you steal a couple of billion pesos, the, the crook is gone and the clients, the people who put money into the bank, they're having to pay for the fraud. Mm -hmm. So we have a solution we did years ago called Solution Bank Fraud. Well, We've already covered that also. <laughs> okay. Have you talked it about, uh, talked about uh, possible um, real means to really uh, streamline and then control? Do you have a control system in terms of the e-vote? Because this seems to be yes. kind of ideal and in a sense that uh, we need real, um, a perfect system. But actually that doesn't yes. work perfect, right? Well, <laughs> what I'm saying is that yeah. we can come up with a, uh, an approach to it, but uh, to, to avoid some skepticism, we'd like to just uh, qualify, how are you going to work on this, uh, um, uh, this uh, e-vote system to be applied how, how is it workable okay, really the, the answer you is know perfectly workable it's there it's already been done it's an unhackable single database really? called mm -hmm. freedom open information action it's f o i a mm -hmm. dot one mm -hmm. in the database will be the election results the citizen decisions called direct democracy mm -hmm. and you're also going to be able to use your cell phone mm -hmm. to very quickly find out who is who and also 
who owns what. So you'll no longer be able to have hidden secret bank accounts and secret assets, particularly putting land and real estate in someone else's name. Okay, thank you. Let me just ask you of your agenda. Um, have you already sat down with the Comelec for, for this proposition? We, we have directly been to Comelec's uh -huh. and we debriefed them almost three years ago. And uh, what were the interactions? Uh, the please uh, let us know. We can never talk to the people who are the decision makers because they're too busy fighting political fires. And uh, that means to say if there will be some resistance, there, there might not be really workable for the meantime. So how are we going to erase or do away or try to eliminate this resistance? Pure publicity. When the people finally start calling the news press and calling the senators going, this is the most obvious common sense system that saves billions of dollars in anti-fraud protection. You do not need anti-fraud protection if you prevent the fraud in the first place. Prevention is always the key, which is why we've been working with the USA government and at every level. We're even working with the military on a new role for the military. It's all about common sense, simplicity, so that we massively reduce the size of government and restore the economy back to the people who will own their own schools, hospitals, roads, energy, water, marketplaces, that's the true key to create a free travel, free trade world. So the database is the answer, FOIA.1. Good. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. So anyway, we don't have much time, but we, uh, we still have time to promote <laughs> our activities tomorrow and today. So, uh, or she could, uh, have a any you know? Uh, meron ba siyang ano? Uh, si babati, babati ba? Just a microphone, ano? Microphone. Oh, you have a question. Okay, uh -huh. so I think uh, Mary Queen has a uh, something to ask. Uh, uh, add. Okay. Uh, on your microphone. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kung Lap lapit mo pa. Yeah. Sa pamamagitan po ng app na m eighteen mm dot com. Paano po kikita ang isang katulad ko or ang isang individual? Translate. A question? How do young people, even minors, can learn business? Well, they start with teenmm.com. How? They read the book and that they can watch the videos. No, 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 no. Kids, kids, kids. Wait, wait, wait. Typically 12 to 13 years old. Wait, is there an app for that? Uh, and it's actually a video-based book, so the application yeah, is the website. Uh, okay, website. so what's the website? TeenMM.com. It's already in Tagalog. It was translated three years ago. So well, it's already in Philippine language. That's really uh, great, and huh? Awesome. And it's the result of 40 years of educating our young people to be independent and self-thinking. Okay. So Stand on their own two feet. You were saying 13 years old and above. Yes. It's what's covered here with the teen um, mm. mm.com. And that means to say, uh, that answered your question. For as long as you have the uh, entrepreneurial ability or training, especially with mentoring, this is with parental guidance. That's correct. <laughs> More or less. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> because the teen.com needs, uh, you, you were mentioning uh, the Oreo principle that uh, there needs to be mentoring. Of course, the parents will have to start. Uh, funding for the kids yes. uh, who have talents here because if it's the like or the hobby or the you know the inclination of the child to to have to be a businesswoman yes. then he or she can be trained uh, and become a good um, businessman uh, in um, with the help and mentoring of the parents first and with the guide of this uh, particular uh, website we'll be able to, le to learn more about uh, how the system works. Yes. Maybe uh, you just address this uh, for, for them, all the kids or the uh, young entrepreneurs to really read and go to this website to learn more about uh, this uh, write-up. Okay? okay? Just one question. Um, regarding this uh, entrepreneurial uh, for, the ki uh, for the kids, for the teenagers, but parents uh, here in the Philippines, we are 
uh, I'm a parent also. Uh, we are really after the education of the children. Yes. And usually our mindset here is we have to let the children study first before going to any uh, any kind of business or going into the that thing you know, of uh, working or earning because that will for us this is a distraction for for the kids to study and uh, have a degree or be this is philippine system uh in the filipinos really after that the education and they once they graduate yeah the the ladder is have uh, a degree first okay a uh, graduate and then uh, that's the time you will uh, let the, the parents will let the children uh, go for earnings or look for earnings. Well, one of the problems is your smartest young people, whether they be homeless, indigenous, or street kids, will never, never have an opportunity to get a degree. Now, would you rather not have any loans and never have to pay for school and your child gets the highest yeah. level of education based on merit? And also, when you teach the children to start part-time jobs and services, including artwork, technical, producing products or services, when they're doing that at age 15, they're going to love to go to school because now finance, engineering, product development, and sales makes them money. And the thing is, if they're earning their own money, they're going to be very, very careful how they spend it. If the parents constantly give money to their children, the kids are going to waste it on frivolous type things. If they earn their own money, they're going to learn to manage their own money. So you're and that's saying that's the real key. You're saying that uh, they will no longer depend on the parents for them to yes. set the uh, go to yes. school or spend money for for the children. Yes, and what the parents can do is to introduce their children to their friends who are business people and see if you can get internship. See if you can get these other parents to mentor your children, and then your friends can mentor your child because children typically don't want to take advice from their own parents. By the way, do you have, uh, did you have uh, collaboration with the parents uh, on these things? Yes, and we're doing this through some of the churches, but we're really going directly through the internet because the children, the young people, love to use video. In the Philippines, they use more Facebook than any other nation. Mm -hmm. So if we can use the viral social media to spread the word that they can be rich and famous, based upon their own merit, not just because their parents are rich. What, what are changes their, the mindset. Yeah, uh, sorry kid, but what yeah. are their, uh, what, what are their uh, reaction on this and or rather opinion about this? Uh, yeah. Have you talked to parents directly, talk about this uh, beautiful plan that you have for the children? Well, the parents that understand the significance of them not having to fund the education and they finally see that their children are, dis are having business discussions with other adults, they love that because that's the first aspect of running your own small business is the ability to communicate with adults, not other teenagers, but adults that actually understand how to run business. So that's a real, the, one of the key factors for TeenMM.com. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Keith Duncan. We'll have you next time. And more, uh, more on time, uh, hopefully, uh, so we could really elaborate more on your uh, advocacy. Anyway, so it's really bye-bye time now. So uh, most of us have to uh, say bye-bye. Firstly, uh, would you like to say bye-bye? Um, yes, yes, please. Um, I'd like to greet Brad Lord Ram, Kalokan Council, Kabana Kamanaba Council, and Brad Ronald Sales. Hello po. Brad Nestor. Um, get well soon po. <laughs> Skeptron de Vancouver. And to all member of Victory Monumenta Chapter. God bless you all and lo long live. Okay, Melba. Shout out. Okay. Yes, I am. Yeah, so thank you very much uh, uh, for this uh, wonderful discussion natin. No? At uh, maganda to na napag-usapan natin about uh, youth. As I was saying, talaga, I'm an advocate of the youth also. Kaya, kaya I, I'm going to support all the, the things na meron ang uh, project sa mga youth. And also, I'd like to again uh, invite po yung mga gustong magkaroon ng trabaho pero hindi kayo matatali. Uh, meaning we have free time and uh, bahala 
kayo ang bahala sa inyong facing of uh, working. I'm inviting you on May 1 at uh, 8.30 in the morning sa um, Ayala North Exchange Tower and uh, try to try to see this business uh, plan for you. Thank you. Uh, Dennis? Uh, yun, uh, Pinoy Buhay Kooperatiba every Friday. At saka yung event natin tomorrow, Kuya Hens. Yan. Tsaka sa TC Mall ng Katie Tunnel uh, Summer Expo. Yan. Okay, uh, say bye-bye now, uh, Keith. Yes, uh, thank you so much for joining the show today. Please continue to listen and help us with mass publicity by going to your top leaders and the press so the new system will become your new reality society. Okay, Bob. Yes, of course. Uh, thank you for uh, for watching today. Actually, uh, one summary that we have here. Actually, today's show actually featured uh, besides the youth uh, uh, empowerment, we're talking also about education and World School Fund. That uh, an idea or a concept remains a concept unless you process it yes. and you start to believe in it and work for it. Everything is possible under the sun if you are really. Uh, proactively believing and supporting your cause and this is where advocacy comes in so let's start to believe in things that can be workable for our the best of our country the best of the world okay so see you again next Friday here at Pinoy Buhay Cooperativa thank you okay huwag niyo po kalilimutan ang show ni Ma'am Melmira the Miss Butterfly ang susunod po sa alauna ito po si Henry Samaniego saying bye bye for now and Pinoy Buhay Cooperativa bye bye alright thank you Mamel thank you <laughs> <laughs>